In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this cool little image overlap effect using the Divi theme or the Divi Builder for your WordPress website. So I'm on a page I've got in the Divi Builder. I've imported a basic layout, but I've removed a bunch of content at the top here. So the way it works is, first of all, I want to add in my columns. So I'm going to add in a row and basically set up something like this. I'm going to add in a call to action on the left, which we're just going to leave blank. So we've got some content on the left here. This is just whatever you want it to be. This is not necessarily part of the tutorial. We're just putting something there visually. And we got our row here with a column structure, which is about sort of 60, 40, 60% 60 on the left, 40% on the right. Now, if I come back over here, I want to add in an image. So I click this plus symbol, come down to image. And I'm going to find an image to place at the top. So I've got this little hand holding a stopwatch and I click tick and you can see it's not the full width, but uh, either way, that's not necessarily a problem. It's just good to, to note that this is not a full width image, but I'm going to add in another image here, such as this laptop image. They don't have anything to do with each other, but a good example either way and I click tick. So I've got one image and another image below it. And what I really want to do is if I want to have one to the left and one to the right, I need to assign left and right, but also I don't want these to be the full width. And it's important to note, even though this image is not the full width, if I resize my browser, it will actually, it may take up the full width. So what I need to do is actually go into this image on the gray little box here, click the cog, go into my design and under alignment, I'm going to stick with, we'll make, actually we might right align this image. So it's sitting off to the right. And then we get into sizing underneath that. And the max width I'm going to say is 70%. I'm going to type that in. So regardless of what we do with the size, it'll be no more than 70% wide. And I'm going to click tick. And on this bottom image, similar again, I'm going to click the little gray box in the cog, go to design. Alignment, this time we're going to stick with left. The sizing, max width, I'm going to say 55%. Click OK. So you can see how they're kind of stacked one after another. I think this one's a bit small, so I can go in and adjust this. So I go design, sizing, and make it more like, say, 75% width. And you can see they're now stacked one after another. But how do we get the overlap? So what we need to do is actually move the bottom image up so it sits over this image. So I click on this image again, go into the cog. I go to my design tab. And now I'm going to come down to spacing. And you see here we have a margin. I make sure this is unlinked. I'm going to give it negative, let's say 30%. And now it literally moves up over this image. Now, something to consider too, is if you don't want this image to be the overlapping image, you can change. If I go to advanced, go to advanced and position, I can change the Z index. I can bring this back so it goes behind or drag it up so it goes in front. And this works for basically uh, whatever elements you have. The higher the number, the more priority it'll have to sit over the top of another element. So that's just a little side tip, but I'm gonna put this back to what it was and click tick. So now we have our image effect here and we can continue to stack images down and just simply right align, left align, add that margin, play with the Z index until we get the effect we're after. But for now, what I'm going to actually do is show you a little bit more of what we can do with these, these elements. One thing I can do is if I click on this top image, I go to design, scroll all the way down to animation. I can still set some pretty cool effects such as a slide animation and go from say, go right, so it slides in from the right. It's a bit too full on. I'm gonna bring that intensity down a bit. So it slides in like that, click tick. I take the bottom image, I do go to the cog, design. I come down and animation, this time I'm gonna go slide and up. And I'm gonna bring that intensity down a bit as well. So now when the page loads, which we'll just quickly duck out and have a look. We get this cool little animation when the images arrive. Now go back into the visual builder and don't forget you can do almost anything with these images. So even if I come in here, if you have a transparent PNG, you can do the same effect again. Even if I want to add another image. 
search for PNG. So I choose something like this PNG here. I can go to my design tab again, alignment, center, sizing, we'll give it a max width of 35%. So that's very small. And I come down to spacing and the margin at the top, I can go negative 200%. Let's see where it takes it. Right off the screen. Just remember, it doesn't have to be percent. In this case, let's just go negative 150 pixels and it places it here. And I can just simply play with my arrows. I'm gonna bring it down to about, let's just say negative 40. And I'm just gonna hit the arrow there to drag it up a little. So we've got this nice little positioning here with these images overlapping. So with transparent PNGs, you can also overlap those. That's a very handy uh, sort of tool to have. But on top of that, if I click on say this image here of the laptop, I can play with all of the design settings. I can come down to things like my border and I can round the corners by say 50 pixels and have round corners. I can even turn the link off and put zero on either one of these corners and get a cool effect like this. I can also add drop shadows just to enhance the effect. I'm gonna bring the blur strength down. And what I can also do is copy box shadow, go back to this image, go to design, box shadow, and paste the box shadow so we get the exact same box shadow on both. And again, also, if I want to, I can do that same border effect. I'll go 50 pixels, unlink, so I can go zero and zero. So you can see how we start to get a more customized effect with these images. And on top of that, we can take things further, like I'm not gonna go through too much more of this, but we can go to transform, we can skew the image a little if we want to. So you've got a lot of different options to do something just a bit different. I can unlink these again and put this back to zero. And I can skew this image as well. So maybe I skew this one one way. Transform, unlink, sorry, skew, skew this one. The other way, get like a bit of a zigzag effect. So there's a lot of possibilities you can apply to this effect. Once again, I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder and let's take a look. And we get this nice effect here. And don't get me wrong, this is a little bit overcooked. I would prefer to maybe not have the skewing on there. It gives you an idea of what you can do with this effect. The idea of combining transparent PNGs, multiple images, and working from there. But what happens when we go to mobile? We'll go back into the Visual Builder I'm gonna click on our little purple dot in the bottom down here and over on the left, we can see how this looks on a tablet. And on a tablet, it doesn't look too bad. However, maybe we just, maybe we don't want it to be quite as big of a difference. So I can also adjust these settings on mobile. So maybe what I do is I come to this bottom image, click cog, go to design, and where it says sizing, I can hover over max width. I click the mobile icon Make sure you choose tablet and I change the max width to say 40%. A little bit small, let's make it 60. So we still get a nice overlap, but it's not too aggressive. I can tone that down. And then under spacing, if I come down to spacing where I have negative 30%, I can say negative 50% and keep using my arrows to line that up. So I can actually customize the effect for tablet and then follow on do the same for a mobile phone. I can check that here. It doesn't look too bad on mobile, but you get the idea. We go through the same process as we would with the tablet. So again, I'm going to exit the Visual Builder, save, and on tablet, we get this effect. So that is a really handy way to add a little bit of pizzazz to your designs. Hopefully that helps you with a design you're working on or gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. And don't forget to check out all the other Divi tutorials I have on my channel. I haven't been doing as many of them lately, but I'm going to try and pick that up a little bit. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you again soon.